once you learn how to write mathematical proofs, once you actually understand how to do it, so you can look at a problem and you can say, okay, this is what I assume, this is what I have to show, and then in your mind you have a couple ideas. Once you get to that level, that's when it really takes off. That's when you really start loving mathematics. Most people don't get to that level for a variety of reasons. And so in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips for getting to that level. Also, if you are trying to get to that level right now and you're struggling to learn to write proofs and you hate it, just know that it's okay, it's normal, and I really think that the reason that maybe you don't like it is simply because you don't understand it, right? So because you don't get it. But once you get it, okay, once you get it, it's a game changer and like, it just, it's beautiful. You know, I, I thought I liked math when I was in Calc 2. I loved Infinite Series. It was so cool. I loved the convergence test. I was like, oh, this is so cool. The P test, the ratio test. Oh, I was such a, such a nerd. You know, I loved it. But when I learned to write proofs, that was a game changer. I was like, okay, this is beautiful. This is, this is amazing. This logical flow of ideas is just beautiful. But when you don't understand the structure, when you don't know how to do it, it can make you feel defeated. And it's, it's okay to feel that way. But if you really want to take your math to the next level, you have to learn to write proofs. And trust me, once you understand the structure, it's not that bad. It's, it's learning new math that's still hard, but having that structure behind you, having the proof structure, knowing how to construct proofs, knowing how to write a direct proof, a proof by contradiction, a proof by contrapositive, knowing how to prove an if and only if statement. Once you know how to do those things, you can pick up a book on advanced mathematics and you can start learning. You can pick up a book on an abstract algebra and start learning abstract algebra. You can pick up a book on real analysis and start learning real analysis. It's, it's still going to be really, really hard, right? But you have the proof-based background. You have that foundation that at least lets you attempt these more challenging subjects. And, and your proof writing will evolve over time. You'll get better over time. It's not just like, oh, you learn to write proofs and then all of a sudden it's super, super easy. No, no, no. It's still incredibly difficult. Math is a lifelong journey of learning. So in this video, I want to talk about the best way to learn to write proofs. So first, let me say something that I didn't want to say, but I'm going to say it. When it comes to writing proofs, you really want to make sure that you learn from the best possible sources. So I would recommend that you get some books and we'll, and we'll talk about some books later. Books are pretty good, but once you know how to write proofs, even the proofs in books sometimes don't seem that good because you feel like your own proofs are better. When you feel like your proofs are more clean and more clear than the ones in the books, that's how you know you've reached a certain level of like, yeah, I can write proofs. I know what's going on. It's kind of like being a programmer. If you are reading someone else's code, you're like, okay, oh, that's what they did there. Oh, okay, I understand. But when you write your own code, it's like, oh yeah, this is my program. I like the way I wrote it. This is this is awesome. This is the best program because it makes sense to me. And I wrote down, you know, this code that creates this program and this is how it all fits together. And I know it fits together in a logical way because I created that logical construction. The same thing happens with proof writing. You, you look at the proof and you say, this is my proof. I constructed this proof. There is no better proof than my proof. The proof in this book is inferior. That, that, it's kind of a weird feeling, but when you create something, it makes more sense to you. And that, that's the level you want to get to. So you want to learn from the best, if possible. So a book is, is a good way. Now, the best way to learn to write proofs is, is taking a class, and a class in college, face-to-face -face class if you can. And hopefully you can get a good professor. Hopefully your professor is good and writes clean proofs. It's not always the case. It's just the way life works. But having a good professor that can write good proofs is an absolute requirement almost for most people to learn to write proofs. I mean, you can learn on your own. It's tough. You can do it. If you get a lot of books, you can learn. But having a professor is good. I was really lucky. I was very, very lucky because I was doing math and computer science. So I took a proof writing class and the discrete math class, which is a computer science math class for computer science students. And in the discrete math class, we had to do proofs. And it was kind of cool because in my math class, we did logic and proof. We spent a lot of time on the logic and we didn't really get to the formal proofs 
or the, rather the informal proofs until the end of the semester. So we spent a lot of time on logic. And then in my discrete math class, that class covered a lot of topics. So when we got to proofs, it was like, okay, here's a proof. Here's how you do it. You know, <laughs> so, so it was like this weird mix. So I felt like I was on top of the world because I was getting instruction from two very, very good professors. One uh, being uh, a man from the U.S. He passed away several years ago. Uh, great man. He used to anoint us before class. Very good. That was the math professor. And then uh, for my computer science based math class, uh, it was this Middle Eastern man. He had a very thick accent and he was really hardcore, amazing professor. So having two distinct professors teach me proofs in different ways was a big benefit for me. And then I had other great professors in abstract algebra and stuff that really, really showed me how to write elegant proofs. And I tried to mimic what they did. So taking a class lets you see experienced professionals write quality proofs. And the more math classes you take, the more proofs you see. And so what you want to do is you want to try to emulate what you think is the cleanest proof from these math professors, from these various classes. And you want to try to absorb that and incorporate it into your own proof writing. And that's how you learn. I'm getting goosebumps. I mean, that that's really how you learn to write proofs. That's the best way. Now, I realize that's not the easiest way. Many of you, you know, don't want to go to college. Many of you don't have the time or the money or the energy. And I get it, right? Time is the most valuable resource we all have. So, so what can you do besides that? Well, you can take an online course. There's online courses at colleges. That's also good. And at least with an online course at a college, you get college credit. There's accountability. But more importantly, you get feedback. Feedback is something that is very hard to get from a book. Okay, as much as I love books and I think you should buy books and books are great, it's hard to get feedback on your own proofs from a book. And it's hard to email people online and get feedback. You know, like if someone emails me and they send me their proof, it's hard for me to uh, it's hard for me to read all the emails I get. But you should email me if you have questions. But I still struggle to keep up, right? I, I don't get to read all of them. So if someone were to send me a math proof and say, can you check my proof, I probably wouldn't have time to look at it, right? It takes a lot of work, time, and energy. So by taking a class, you have a dedicated professor whose job is to actually give you that time and energy to look at your proof. So at least when you turn in your homework assignments, at least they're graded. And so when you get them back, you have some feedback on your work. And that feedback is critical. It's critical for learning to write proofs. So again, that, that's the best way to learn to write proofs. Take a class so you get that feedback. A lot of people, they'll take a class on proof writing and they'll get that feedback and they'll give up. And I get it. I get it. I understand. It's hard, right? It's not easy. But just know that once you get over that hurdle, once you learn to write proofs, all of math opens up for you. So let's say you don't want to take courses online or out of college. What can you do? Well, there's YouTube videos. I have a bunch of YouTube videos on proof writing, and I'm pretty sure all of my proofs are 100% correct. There's no mistakes. So you can check those out. I have a bunch of playlists. I also have courses on my website, mathsorcerer.com. Check it out. I have a couple courses on proof writing. I don't have a dedicated course for proof writing yet, but I have like two courses that are okay and they have some decent proofs and they're organized. Let's talk about books because I think books are a good way. Let's start with the free book, a book that's going to cost you nothing. It's free. You can just go on Google and, and search for it. It's this one here. You might say, if it's free, why do you have it? Well, because I bought it. <laughs> I, I I read that was reading the book online. I, I'm I'm okay with ebooks. I prefer physical books. So I went on Amazon and I bought this. I bought it on Amazon. By the way, I'll leave links in the description to all of these books. This one's called Book of Proof. I've read maybe a few chapters from this book and portions of other chapters, and I've done maybe 30, 40 problems from this book. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's it's one of the better books. It's free. It's by Hammock. It's called Book of Proof. I'll leave a link in the description. Another really, really good one. Well, I'll save this one for last. I'm going to save the best for last just to make it suspenseful. So another really good one, which is recommended to me by one of my former college professors is How to Read and Do Proofs by Daniel Solo. I know a few of you here on the channel have talked about this book. You've used this book. You're working through the book and you like it. So other people have spent some time with this book. I've read small portions of this book. I haven't spent a lot of time with it, um, but it's highly acclaimed and highly praised by people here on the channel and by the reviews on Amazon really good book. Another book which I've spent some time with, which is a relatively new book, which again, a lot of people here on the channel have commented on, is um, Proofs by Jay Cummings. I know some of you here have been working through this book diligently. I know I've seen a lot of the comments, people saying they've been working through this book every day and just working really hard and they really love this book. So it's a thick book. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit wordy. 
um, I mean, I think it's pretty good. It's a very thick book. So, and it's inexpensive. So it's inexpensive. It's worth trying. My advice is to get every single proof book you can afford, okay? Because proof writing is hard. This one is one that I've had for a long time and I've spent a long time with. This is a Transition to Advanced Mathematics by Shard Tran Palamini and Zhang. This was recommended to me by um, a dear friend of mine who uh, passed away actually um, seven months ago. It's kind of sad, but he was a big fan of this book. And yeah, great book. I love this book. I've done a lot of the examples from this book. I've worked through them. Um, I've done a lot of the exercises. This is a quality textbook. It's a little bit on the pricey side, but it's very, very good. I think it's better than um, all the ones I showed you. I, I do think it's better. I think it's a better book. So very good book. And then we have this one here. Um, I actually use this one to uh, teach an independent study with some students a few times in college. And it's pretty good. Some of the students uh, I had, um, they didn't like this book as much as the uh, Chartran book that I just showed you. They thought this one was inferior. I think this one's great, but that's just my opinion. Um, it's got some nice proofs. It's got a lot of topics, right? So it's a proof book, but it has all kinds of topics in it, all kinds of math in it. So definitely recommend this one if you can afford it. It's a bit on the pricey side. The last one I'll show you, and then we'll talk a little bit more about proof writing, is this one here. It's called How to Prove It, a Structured Approach. This is probably currently my favorite one uh, because, I don't know, I like the size and it was forced upon me. Some people were, uh, I don't remember who it was, but um, they kept leaving comments. Did you get the book? Did you get the book? I'm like, fine, I'll buy it. And I didn't want to buy it because I didn't want to spend the money. I know I paid over $20 for it and I have a lot of books and I'm not rich, so I try not to, I try to buy too many books. Plus, I have books on the floor. You can't see them. I don't have any more bookshelves. So I need to get another bookshelf. So I have, I have a problem. I have too many books. Great book. The reason I like this book is because he spends a lot of time on the logic. So he'll do the informal proof, Daniel Velman, who's the author, and then he'll 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 talk about the proof multiple ways. He'll try to explain it to you, like, and he'll try hard. So I think that's important when you're learning to write proofs because you might not always understand the explanation. And that's the key point with all of these books, right? You you, you get one of these books, and um, you read the explanation and you don't get it. So what do you do? You read another book. That's why I think it's good to get as many books as you can. And it's one of the reasons I have so many books, right? The reason I have so many books is because math is hard. People always think that, oh, you know, you spent a lot of money on books. I did. I did. But it's been over almost 20 years. I've been collecting math books for almost 20 years. I think it might actually be exactly 20 years. I don't know. I don't want to date myself, but it's almost 20. It's almost 20 years of just doing mathematics. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. So proof writing, it's a tough one. Um, taking a course is the best way. It really is. But it's not a guarantee that you're going to learn, right? Because, again, I'm, I'm not one to blame other people, but, like, you really want to have someone who's writing really clean proofs so that you can mimic those proofs. I, I don't want to pump myself here, but this is free. So if you go on my channel and um, I have a playlist on set theory, look at my set theory proofs. Those proofs are clean. They're correct. They're very detailed. There's no ambiguity. There's no mistakes, right? I'm wearing a... A stupid wizard hat. They're, they're kind of old videos. The quality's not great. I think I made these videos before I even knew how to edit. I mean, I, I was using a very cheap phone, and I'm still recording this with a very cheap phone. <laughs> this is a very old iPhone. But the point is the mathematics is correct, okay? It's correct. And the proofs are clean, and you need that. You need that. A lot of books have proofs, and they're very terse. They're very quick. For example, um, there's a famous book on mathematical analysis. It's called Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Walter Rudin. This is a very famous book. I, I own the first edition because I'm a collector of math books. And I think it's a great book. And in fact, I might even sit down and, and read a little bit today. You know, it's a fantastic book, but it's extremely hard to read. And he doesn't explain the proofs. I mean, he just says, here's epsilon, here's delta, here's the proof. How do I figure out what you figured out? It's up to you. And most of the time it's like the proof is left as an exercise to the reader. I don't know why they do that. I, I think they just want you to struggle and learn because I think that's the best way to learn to write proofs. It's true. In order to learn to write proofs, you can't just copy someone's proof. You actually have to understand how to construct your own proof. So you actually have to put in the effort. You actually have to put in the work. And I think that a lot of these math people, these mathematicians who write these books, they know that. And that's why they purposely leave out answers. Also, a lot of times answers are left out because professors will take those exercises and assign them as homework questions. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll assign them as test questions, which is really good. I had a partial differential equations teacher who we used a really hard book. Was, I thought it was hard. It was one by Strauss. And he would give us homework. 
And I remember going to his office and he wouldn't help me with the homework. It was really weird. He was like, oh, no, I'm busy. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was just waving his hands and he had some weird smell coming from his office. It was just a really weird experience. He was a great teacher, amazing man, really little guy, a really little Middle Eastern man, very little, bold, very, very tiny man. Brilliant teacher, brilliant. The guy was a brilliant mathematician, brilliant. I mean, just like a legendary mind. So good. Ah, getting goosebumps. But he wouldn't help me with my homework. I was like, that's really weird. Why won't he help me? He seems very busy. And on the test, he put the homework questions on the test. And I think they were from the book. So that's just a, it's a nice way for teachers to be able to find homework problems. So that's why a lot of times these books don't have answers, right? Because the books uh, are chosen by the teachers, right? If you're a teacher, a lot of times you get to choose the book or there's a committee that chooses the book, especially in the advanced math classes. You know, if, if you choose the book, you want to choose a book that you can use for problems because you have other stuff you have to do besides teach, right? And teaching is hard. You have to grade anything that makes your job easier as a teacher, right? I mean, teachers are human beings too, right? So by picking these books, which is a trend, a lot of books don't have answers. They can assign those problems as test questions and homework questions. So that's another reason sometimes why a lot of these books are so terse, I think. But you do have to struggle to learn. So that's why I have so many books. Anyways, proof writing, it's, it's a struggle. Um, it's hard for everyone. You're not alone. I, I've known plenty of people who've given up on mathematics because of proof writing. Also know this, one more thing before I end this video. Once you learn how to write proofs, you can get a math degree. You can. Like that, that's the one thing you need to know how to do because you can get through the calculus sequence, calc 1, calc 2, calc 3, DE. You can be a rock star and get all A's. But then you get to proof writing. It's like, uh, uh. So then once you learn to write proofs, then you have to tackle, you know, advanced calculus, abstract algebra. But you need to master the proof writing before you can jump into those classes. You know, sometimes you'll have a statement in an advanced math class and you have to take like the negation of that statement. Like how do you negate the definition of a limit? Right. How do you do that? Right. So you need to be able to do that cold. How do you do a proof by contradiction uh, on a limit or something? You know, what, how, how do you do that? You know, some, and then sometimes you have more complex definitions, like you have like these double series. You know, how do you deal with that? So things can get a little bit more complicated. They can get a little bit delicate. And it's in times like that that your logic really shines. Those basic core principles you learn in those proof writing techniques come back in, in your higher level math classes. So having a good grasp of that will allow you to get really far. And you, you can get a math degree. You can. If you can learn to write proofs, if you if you buy this book and you and write the proofs in this book, you can you can uh, you can do it. You can get a math degree, right? You can do it. But easier said than done. And again, the biggest hurdle, the biggest hurdle is going to be feedback. So try to read good proofs. And again, check out my playlist on set theory. It's free. I've also got a playlist on uh, function sets and relations. It's free. I've got an abstract algebra playlist. It's, you know, on YouTube. And so it's got some proofs and I've got some advanced calculus proofs and some topology, not much, but I've got some topology stuff. So it's all correct. There's no mistakes. So, yeah. And those proofs are pretty clean. I, I was always, I was always pretty good at writing proofs. That's because I had that, I had that foundational start where I took those two classes at the same time. And I think if I wouldn't have had that, it would have been really hard. Like I can't imagine if I had just taken the proof writing class and not that discrete math class, or or if I had taken that discrete math class and not the proof writing class, it would have been harder for me. So having having the double courses, those two courses on proof writing really, really helped me. And it was still really hard when I got to the advanced math classes. It didn't make it easy. It just made it doable, I think. So yeah. What do you think? What do you think about proof writing? Do you have advice for people watching this video? Do you have any stories to tell about your proof writing experience? What are some of the things you struggle with in proof writing? Do you think there's other books that are good? Do you think any of these books are better than others? Anything, anything that can help people who are watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. As always, keep doing math.